This one is called Something Special in the Workshop. Not in the workshop something special like I would normally title a video. So what's so special about this? Well this is a Castle Steam V6 boiler. And I've seen one of these before because a friend of mine bought one and he brought it with him when he came to visit me a while back and I fitted a hand pump and a steam pump to it. And then using the boiler we ran a steam engine or two. And I remember being very impressed at how freely this boiler steamed. So I got this one. And it is a thing of absolute beauty. I really am impressed with this. I'm not just saying this for the sake of it. I'm very impressed with every aspect of this boiler, from its physical appearance to its mechanical construction to the fundamental design. I'm going to let the video speak for itself. Look at the quality of the fittings. This is a three cock water gauge, and believe me, these are not cheap items. And not forgetting the superb fire hole door. It's a work of art. Not only does this beautiful firehole door have an air vent at the front, it has a baffle plate, so when you open the air vent to let some air into the fire, this baffle plate deflects the flow of air so it doesn't just rush up the tubes because any cold air rushing up the tubes would cool the boiler down. The design of this boiler allows it to be a dual fuel boiler. It will run on gas or it will run on coal. I'm going to fire it using coal. So the holes in the fire hole door are very useful for letting air over the fire to reduce the amount of smoke made by the fire itself. The top cap of the boiler which supports the chimney is held onto the boiler just using three bolts. These are 6BA bolts and they're clearly marked with an arrow. I'm going to remove them so I can take the top off and show you what's inside. And inside the top of the boiler it looks like this. So what's going on here? This is the wet header, which takes wet steam from the boiler, and it feeds it to a radiant superheater element that goes right down the middle of the boiler back into the fire, and then it routes it to the output. So what's all this other piping? What's this coil of piping? This is a boiler feed preheater. The clack is at the right hand side, so the cold water comes in, goes around this pipe a couple of times before it goes into the boiler. And because this pipe is in direct line of fire, with the fire that's coming up the fire tubes, the tube gets hot. So the cold water that's been fed into the clack valve from a pump or whatever's going to feed the boiler starts to be heated before it even gets into the boiler. This device really is known as an economizer because effectively I think it saves energy. By preheating the boiler feed water like this, it just means that the boiler pressure doesn't drop quite as much as it would do if you were putting very cold water into the boiler. There are two short copper tubes that stick out of the hole in the middle. One of those is the steam blower that directs a jet of steam at the chimney to draw the fire, and the other one is connected to a union on the outside of the boiler, and this allows connection of the exhaust from a steam engine to the boiler itself, and the exhaust is immediately rooted up the chimney, and that will really draw the fire. Although when using the exhaust of the engine to draw the fire, it's a good idea to put a condenser in front of the exhaust pipe before it goes into the boiler. Otherwise the constant gurgling noise from this pipe when the engine is running can get on your nerves. Moving down to the bottom of the boiler, this is the firebox, and as you can see it's a full wet firebox, with a central superheater flue, and as far as I'm aware, 72 fire tubes. Absolutely superb, just what you need. And it gets better, this is the ash pan and it has a fire grate in it for a coal fire, so I'm going to remove this because today I'm going to test run the boiler using a gas burner. And purely by chance, my little gas burner that I bought a while back that was incredibly cheap, and it came all the way from China, and if you've been watching the series about the renovation, or should I say modification, of the Great Western Railway 14XX locomotive that's currently sat on the bench next to the boiler, you will recognise the fact that this was the same gas burner that I used to test fire that. And it's completely by pure luck that it is a perfect fit in the ash pan base of this V6 boiler. And with it in position, I've turned on the gas and now I'm lighting it. So it's not exactly the most ferocious flame I've ever seen, but I'll shut the fire hole door and see what happens. I'm sure it will eventually raise steam because it did on the locomotive and I was surprised how much steam I got from that. I'm shutting the vent on the firehole door because I don't think that needs to be open. 
And when I put my hand over the chimney like this, I really am surprised how little heat there is there. And the gas flame is okay. I would think this is pretty hot. I would not like to put my finger through into the fire hole to test this. In under 10 minutes, believe it or not, there is 40 pounds per square inch showing on the gauge. And not long after that, it went up a lot higher. I'm going to run this boiler for starters at 100 pounds per square inch, which is fairly high. But that is the working pressure that is clearly stated on a maker's plate at the front of the boiler. And here it is, running at £100 per square inch. And the good news is, my carbon monoxide alarm that's fitted in the workshop just remains silent, which means that the burner is burning efficiently. So now I've got all this pressure in the boiler, what am I going to do with it? I know I'll connect a small steam engine to it. And my steam engine of choice for this test is this one, only because it's the one that's nearest to the boiler. This is a microcosm, twin-cylinder marine engine with Stevenson's Link reversing gear and it really does run well. Please bear in mind this is very hot steam as well, it's through a radiant superheater, but the engine's coping with it beautifully and it's very, very smooth. I only really wanted to run this small engine because currently I have no way of feeding any more water into the boiler. This is the blower and it's very noisy and it really is blasting a lot of steam up the chimney. I would say that possibly a blast of this ferocity is more than I'm ever going to need. And Castle Steam have covered all the options. It's a very simple job to make a much smaller nozzle for the blower, as the end of the blower pipe is threaded to take one. And when using a steam blower, always remember that it's not the volume of steam going up the chimney that draws the fire, it's the speed of the steam. So what do I think about this Castle Steam V6 boiler, and what are the marks out of 10? Well, the marks out of 10, that's easy. 10. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. And you'll see quite a lot of it, because whenever I run a steam engine in future, I'm going to be using this. Sometimes I'll be using it outside, running it on coal, or inside, running it on gas. Before I go, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Steve and his wife from Castle Steam for delivering the boiler to me personally. A very nice touch, and I enjoyed your company and wish you could have stayed longer. And once again, this is a superb product. Maybe you could say it's reassuringly expensive, but it's a boiler that you will only ever need to buy once. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.